Hey everyone, the sequence that you use to withdraw your money in retirement can make a massive difference in the amount of taxes you pay and how long your money lasts. Today, I'm gonna dive in and show you an alternate way to think about taking withdrawals that very few people are talking about. And if you're thinking about retiring or you've just retired, you're gonna be glad you watched this video. So. For those of you that have followed my channel for long, you know that I'm not scared to confront the accepted conventional wisdom in retirement planning. For example, we've all heard for years that according to the experts, you should delay your social security benefits for as long as possible. Well, when you dig into the numbers, that's not always true. And today, there's another piece of conventional wisdom that I'm refuting, and this one is big, and it has the potential to cost you hundreds thousands of dollars. And it has to do with the order that you tap your retirement accounts to fund your retirement income. For example, let's say that you have an IRA, a joint account, and a Roth IRA. Which one should you take money from first? Well, according to the accepted conventional wisdom, the best way to withdraw is to first take from your taxable account, then from your tax deferred account, and last, your tax free account. This is backed up by hundreds of articles with quotes by financial planners and tax advisors. Now, part of this is simply because so many people in my industry just use software to do this planning, and many of them have lost the ability to think critically. And so they just accept the output that the software gives them. For example, here's a screenshot from one of the largest financial planning software providers in my industry. For the withdrawal sequence, it gives the option of pro rata, which means take a little bit from each account, which is a horrible idea usually. Then there's the standard sequence, which is taxable, tax deferred, and then tax free. That's the conventional wisdom approach. And then it lists some other strategies, which are rarely that useful. Those are all the options available. But what if I told you that none of those options are the most optimal sequence? Let me show you an example. So let's take this couple that looks a lot like many of my planning cases. They have an IRA worth a million dollars, a joint account worth $400,000, and about 50 of that is gain. So once they start selling that off, they're going to have to pay capital gains tax on about 50000 And then one spouse has a Social Security benefit of 3300 and the other spouse has a benefit of $1,650. Now, they're both turning 63, and they want to retire at the beginning of 2024, and they'd like to get about $7,000 per month in net income. Now, I don't want this to get too complicated and talk about layering in Social Security filing strategies, and that certainly does make a difference. But for this, we're just going to talk about how to take withdrawals from accounts. So I'm going to make the assumption in these scenarios that they both simply file at full retirement age. So for this couple, the two strategies that we're going to compare is the strategy where they follow conventional wisdom and take from their taxable account until it's empty and then from their tax deferred account. And then we'll look at an alternate approach that's a little bit more complicated, but it has big results. And so it's certainly worth the extra complication. Instead of just taking from one bucket until it's empty and then moving on to the next bucket, we're going to solve for an average tax rate. In this approach, we're going to take out enough income to fill up the 12% average tax rate. Now, this is not the 12% marginal rate or tax bracket. This is where your average or effective tax would be 12%. This means that you take out the income you need, and if there's still room, you do Roth conversions to get you up to the 12% average tax rate. Here's how this would work out for this couple. First, Let's look at the account balance difference between these strategies. You can see that using the conventional wisdom is slightly better right at first. The account balance is then at 80 or 83. It starts to break even. And at age 90, there's about a $100,000 difference in total account balances. But that's close enough where really that's not all that material. But here's where it gets good. Let's look at taxes. First, we'll look at the conventional wisdom approach, and you can see that in the first few years, they pay no taxes at all. This is because they're getting their income from the taxable account, which has some gains, but still well below the capital gains threshold, and thus they have to pay no taxes. But once that's empty and they move to taking distributions from their IRA, plus have Social Security coming in, 
their taxes start to increase. And over the course of their retirement, they'd have to pay just over $300,000 in taxes. So now let's look at the average tax rate approach. You can see that at first the taxes are higher. This is because you're intentionally creating taxable income when you could have avoided it completely. But around age 73, the taxes start leveling out. And by the end of plan, there's a massive difference in the tax cost. And keep in mind, both of these plans show getting an identical amount of spendable income. But in the conventional wisdom approach, you're paying more than twice as much in taxes. So how you take your retirement income is important. And you need to approach this very carefully and with lots of planning. Please don't just accept the rules of thumb or conventional wisdom. Get a plan that matches your income needs with the type of savings you have and your other income sources. And if you want your own plan that's going to help preserve your account balances and possibly decrease your taxes like we showed today, I want you to get in touch with me and my team. We do plans like these all the time, and we'd love to help you with yours. If you want to find out more, there's going to be a link down in the description where you can read more and book a call to talk to us directly to find out if a plan like this could benefit you. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to helping you with your retirement.